The next main stage session includes three highly experienced individuals in finding and disclosing ICS vulnerabilities. Please welcome Clint Bodigan of Leo Cybersecurity, Art Mannion of CERT CC, and Billy Rios of Whitescope to the S4 main stage. Here you go, guys. So I, I brought in three experts to talk about this. Uh, I don't know how closely you follow the way that vulnerabilities are scored with the idea that this would tell you as an asset owner which ones are important and which ones are not important to or less important to apply to your systems. But the CVSS has, uh, let's say even in the enterprise world, has a lot of detractors. There's a lot, <laughs> a lot of people aren't very happy with it. But when you look at the scores in the ICS cert bulletins that come out, on ICS vulnerabilities, uh, a lot of them are quite laughable. Um, just really don't take into account the actual risk they bring to a control system. So we said, uh, well, you know, instead of just complaining about it, maybe we should try to make it better. And so these three gentlemen have either found vulnerabilities or coordinated vulnerabilities or created scores. So they've got a lot of experience in this area. And what I did is I asked each one of them each one of them to take one specific, specific vulnerability and score it and explain how they would modify the scoring system. So there's three different approaches and actually differences in what they ended up with scores. So what we're going to do is we're going to give each one a chance to introduce their, their approach and give some scores. And then with the time remaining, we'll have them argue as to whose is right and whose is wrong. So Billy, why don't you go first if we could up, put up Billy's slides. Yeah, thanks, Dell. <clears throat> um, I'm going to talk about some things that we did to try to fix CVSS. And uh, this is actually a collaborative effort between myself, Jonathan Butts, and a couple other folks. Uh, and actually, it's paid for by DHS. So uh, when we look at CVSS, it really comes down to three things that are most heavily weighted. Uh, confidentiality, integrity, availability. And those things are really important, especially if you have a like, homogeneous system where every system is essentially the same like an enterprise, you know, enterprise environment where every laptop is basically the same. But uh, in other places, there's things that are more important, like safety, right? And ICS safety is probably important. And healthcare safety is important. Aviation safety is important. Transportation safety is important. In fact, it probably trumps the confidentiality, integrity, and availability piece, right? And so when we look at how these things are scored with CVSS, essentially really it comes down to like doing analysis, finding vulnerabilities, and identifying those characteristics of the vulnerabilities. If you're really good, uh, what you'll do is you'll take a vulnerability, write some code, probably known as a proof of concept, and demonstrate effect, right? What could this vulnerability be leveraged to do, right? But really, where we want to get to is figuring out how that effect actually affects what it is that's important to you. So if you're like a military, how does that affect or vulnerability affect from the vulnerability affect my warfighting capability? If you are a business, how does that vulnerability or the effect from the vulnerability affect my brand? How does it affect operations? How does it affect patient safety, right? That's really what we're trying to get to. We're trying to lean far to the right and figure out what those effects mean, right? And to be honest, things like CVSS, they don't capture uh, that risk very appropriately, right? So we'll give you an example. Um, last year, uh, Jonathan Butts and I did some research on a pacemaker programmer, right? And this is the thing that literally puts code onto a pacemaker remotely over radio, right? And so you can see the, CV, uh, the CVE number. And if you look at how the CVSS score was calculated, we didn't calculate this score. Uh, DHS calculated this score. Uh, it came out to be a, about a 7.1. Not about a 7 point. It came out to be 7.1. And there's a vector string uh, on the slide there, right? So, and then if you look at a different vulnerability, which Dale had kind of pointed us to, which is Snyder Electric Ecostructure vulnerability, uh, it's URL redirection, there's a CVE in there. Uh, that got scored as a 7.4. And so uh, Jonathan actually told me this stat this morning. He said um, someone had announced that Mark Sanchez has a better road playoff record than Tom Brady. Right? And I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting, right? And uh, so obviously, if you were a, a, a head coach for the New England Patriots, you would uh, bench Tom Brady and get Sanchez back, right? So uh, people say numbers don't lie, but numbers lie, right? So, and if you were to look at CVSS, CVSS is like a pathological liar, right? So if we look at these two different vulnerabilities, the CareLink vulnerability, which is a 7.1, that vulnerability can be used to kill someone, right? And then if we look at the ecostructure vulnerability, that vulnerability can be used for phishing, right? And so if you didn't know what these two systems were and you were trying to compare the risk for these two different systems, it may be difficult to prioritize what's more important. Like let's say you're a hospital CISO, 
right? And you're like, hey, I can only patch one of these volumes. Which one do I do? I have no idea what the care link is. I have no idea what the ecostructure is. The ecostructure has a higher score. Maybe we should look at that, right? However, if you're an operator, if you're a doctor, the, 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 you know, the one that you patch is obvious, right? And that's a good thing because folks like people at the FDA, they don't just take that score at face value. They actually do real analysis. In fact, uh, late last year, that programmer that we talked about that we found those vulnerabilities in actually been recalled, right? There was other vulnerabilities for other medical systems that probably have higher CVSS scores. Those weren't recalled, right? But at least we have folks that are thinking about these, uh, these vulnerabilities in the right way. And obviously shows you that CVSS can't be used as a metric to determine what you should be able to do in certain environments. And so instead of just complaining about how, how CVSS is bad and it's a pathological liar, we're gonna show you a system that actually considers the effects, right? So this is the system that we created. You can actually go and take a look at it. It's at riskscoringsystem.com. Uh, at the end of the day, me and Jonathan actually didn't want to assign scores to help people understand what risk is, but for some reason or another, you gotta have a score. Everyone asks for a number, right? And then there are places like in the Department of Defense that actually want what's called a five by five, which is that chart there. So, so if we look at that Medtronic vulnerability, uh, it scores a 7.3 according to our scale, and it, it's, it's pretty high in the right-hand corner, but it's not all the way in the right-hand corner. There are certain, even though this vulnerability can be used to kill someone, there are certainly other types of vulnerabilities that could be even worse, right? And we want to be able to account for that as well, right? We want to be objective in how we score these things. And then if we take a look at the other vulnerability, the ecostructure vulnerability, man, that thing is pretty far to the left, right? Left, bottom left, because the effect that it costs the operations or brand or patient safety is probably pretty low, right? And so we score that as a 3.3. So, so once again, the 7.3 Medtronic can kill someone. The ecostructure used for phishing, uh, and then uh, there's the original score from the CVSS, 7.1 for the CareLink, 7.4 for the ecostructure, and then there's other scoring mechanisms that some of the other panelists had, had scored here. So uh, you can play around with this calculator if you want. It's at riskscoringsystem.com. You can just go to that URL. All the code that we wrote for that is client side, so you can literally scrape that website and run that internally or however you want. Uh, but more importantly, you can right click and take a look at exactly how we're calculating our scores, how we weighted things and what's more important than the other things. And then there's actually a paper uh, that's on that website as well that actually goes over the rubric and gives some examples and things like that. So uh, I would hope that people would go to the website, take a look at it, play around with it. If you have criticisms or, or compliments, uh, definitely send them our way because we're always interested in feedback as to how that works. And then I'll add kind of one caveat here. You'll notice in our calculations we don't include likelihood because uh, they had a famous uh, military admiral once tell me about likelihood uh, and the military admiral said, it's a trap. Right? So if you start to try to calculate what the likelihood of something is, especially in a socially driven environment like cybersecurity, what's the likelihood of an attack? Uh, the likelihood of an attack is when someone decides to attack you, right? Really difficult to model. So if someone comes up with a really simple model and calculate likelihood, it's probably wrong, right? Or they're a genius, right? And so, uh, but uh, that's something to consider here. So and I think that's, uh, that's the end of my slides here. I think someone else is up okay. next here. Clint, let's... Can we switch over to Clint's presentation then? Thank you. All right, so uh, Dale gave us the option to sit or stand, and those beer ice sacks add up, so I'm just going to sit here and talk. <laughs> so, um, and all right, next slide here. I'll make sure I get this thing to work. So, I mean, how did our, our version of scoring, this was done by uh, quite a few people, myself, Matt Anderson, and a bunch of others um, that, that came up with a scoring system. And it really wasn't because Dale put this to us and said, hey, can you do this? This was long before this. And it really came about because when you get a bunch of ICS cybersecurity professionals that had more Dungeons and Dragons nights than dates in college, um, this is really uh, what, you know, what happens. Um, and so, and... The reason I bring up Dungeons and Dragons is because risk scoring is a lot like that to us. I mean, when you really, once you have your attributes and your data that you want to compare or that you want to use, at that point, the scoring system becomes about aggregators and weights and how you're weighting things uh, and multipliers or modifiers. So those of you that had more Dungeons and Dragons nights than, uh, than dates in college know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> and so... Um, how we got here was that we were obviously thinking that this was a, uh, a modification to the CVSS. And so we started with that as a baseline. And what we realized was that while the CVSS 3 um, made a good attempt with, the, um, with their environmentals and, and their, I uh, forget what they call them, the temporals, um, I think they got further away from something that was usable uh, by ICS. And so we actually started with uh, CVSS version 2 with what they had there. And... Um, 
and we just kind of modified some of the the considerations that they were looking at, um, and we'll talk about that in just a minute, um, and then kind of redid our math. And so I will put forth a disclaimer here that, you know, this is, this is not finished, this is still a prototype, and um, we're still working on the math uh, and, and how things are weighted and modified, and I think we'd, I would like for us to work uh, on this uh, as a community. And so, sorry, no heat maps in this one. Um, um, and, you know, I personally hate heat maps, I'm sorry, but I will say that Brian Owens has the best heat map I've ever seen in my life. Um, and so, and it, was, it was on Twitter and everything was great. Um, and also, I think it's important to point out that, um, that the CVSS scoring system is not meant to really be a risk assessment. Um, it is a piece of a puzzle um, that should be put into an overall risk assessment. I mean, this is, you know, long story short, this is the tip of the iceberg of something more that I'm working on. Um, and so if you would like to score along with the system that we're using, there's the links to it, and you can see all of our formulas. Everything we're doing is open source uh, in terms of the formulas and so. And so, um, oh, that's, I can't even see my own stuff here, but uh, I'll just have to go by memory. But um, it's kind of small, sorry about that, everyone. But the, ultimately, what we have here, and, and, and this, hopefully it looks something similar to the CVSS scoring system, and so you start with your base parameters, and ultimately, um, the base parameters will look similar to what you've seen, and sorry, it's just all tens for, uh, just for data here, but um, the base parameters is going to mimic closer to what you see with the actual CVSS. And um, the local environment modifiers, that's going to actually end up being the, the local ICS environment. These are the things that really modify the CVSS for ICS, because ultimately, you can't look at the CVSS and score this for everybody, and, and you can't take into account this vulnerability is, gonna, is, is going to be like this in this environment, it's gonna be the same for everybody. And that doesn't work. And so you have to have the ability to use local modifiers to your environment, and I think that's what CVSS in the, in the first was trying to do with their temporal scores, but it just didn't work for ICS. And so what we did, we took the whole concept of CIA, the confidentiality, integrity, and availability, and we expressed that, and I don't have a list of what each drop-down list is, but you can go check it on the website. Um, we expressed the confidentiality and integrity in the, in the base consequence in terms of um, data modification, <coughs> uh, denial of service, uh, um, data extraction or, or exposure. And so that was expressed in the top base score. And then what we did was we wanted to consider consequences. Does this affect the process visibility, monitoring, and uh, control? So that's the consequence of how it affects the process. And then the impact. Does it impact safety, reliability, production? And so these are the considerations that we ultimately wanted to look at. And and then, long story short, like I said earlier, was you had different modifiers to those. And so, for example, one thing that was really important to us was it doesn't matter if it's a safety concern if you can't get to it. And so, uh, we listened a lot to the community and Dale's rants and, and other people's rants about how, um, what's important to us as, a, as an ICS community. And so, access and attack vectors are very important. And so, that was a huge weight and, a, and it was a huge multiplier as well as the consequence and then the impact thereof. And so um, this was, so I just, I have all three of the, the vulnerabilities that uh, we were looking at, and some of them had sub-vulnerabilities, and so really all that I looked at um, was kind of, I just took the worst vulnerability of each one and weighted that. And so, um, wow, the lights just went dim, romantic. Um, and so the, um, you'll see that my scores actually did come out um, for the most part, I think a little higher than the other two guys. Um, and, it, and when it comes to killing someone, I think mine was actually higher. So you know, what you just mentioned, that doesn't mean I don't care about human life most of the time. Uh, but uh, sorry, it's just the way it came out with the math. But <clears throat> ultimately, um, the reason that you'll see the mice scores all the way they are really had to come down to what I said earlier, which is the consequence multiplied by the impact and then the huge outer uh, multiplier was can you get to it, the access. And so these are my scores here. Um, and I think the, uh, you can see the original score is a, a 7.1, and um, mine came out to a 6.3, so it was, it was lower. And again, that really comes down to, because the access, it was either the, the, there was less consequences or you can't get to it. And also, I'm making a, a, assumptions about the fact that, you know, I'm, I'm making assumptions about the environmentals. I don't really know what your environment is, so you're gonna come up with a different score than I will based off your environment. 
Um, and here, um, the original score was 7.1, but the score actually went up uh, in mine. And, and yeah, I think that's right, yep. And the reason why is because the, you could have access to it. Um, it was a, I think in, the, in this particular case, and I can barely see it, uh, was a buffer overflow. It had a remote code execution, um, and it had safety impact. And so that was a huge concern. And so that, that actually went up. And on this one, again, we went down because even though we had safety concern and we had uh, con uh, uh, process consequences uh, that impacted safety and production, you, you had a lack of access. You couldn't get to it. And so, then uh, again, that was my assumption based off local environment. And then, oh, I know what, sorry. I missed one of my slides and I misspoke, but I was saying, uh, was, let me go back real quick, uh, showing the hypothetical. And this one, these are the same. Yeah, sorry. This one was how I actually scored it, and I was showing a hypothetical here and that is the same one as before, and that if you could get to it, so having everything the same, if you could get to it and you had access to it, remote access to it, that significantly increased the score. And so it was just demonstrating that um, the, consequences, the consequences and the impact are only relevant if you have access. And then on the last one, again, this was a score of 10 uh, by the original CVSS, and it went down because of the, uh, whether it was a lack of consequences and impact to the process, as well as the fact that you didn't have access to it. And so the last thing I wanna say is um, it's, it's not finished, and I think that the scores, I agree that in many cases, the scores will usually go down from the original CVSS, and uh, the fact that my scores are different than these guys really has to do with the fact that we're not really finished with the math yet, and we're still working on it, so. Okay, right. great. So our third presenter is Art Mannion. Can we put up Art's slide? Great. Hello, everyone. Thanks, Dale. Thanks, guys. Heard a lot of things I agree with, so off to a great start. Uh, I'm going to stick carefully to my slides for timing purposes, but just the discussion so far has me ready to like jump around and <laughs> kick things on the stage. Um, so hopefully this is next. Oh, backwards. Go forward. Yeah. Hit that green button. Big green button, right. Sorry. Okay, so very briefly, I'm going to make some modifications to CVSS scores. Pay careful attention. This is my very uh, elaborately built uh, pr uh, um, animation slide. T pick any score you want, right? We're going to round it. We are going to multiply it by 2, add 9. This is scientifically proven to, to work. Subtract 3, or divide by 2, subtract that, the rounded number you had in the first place, uh, and add 8, because I had a number of uh, fun numbers to pick for a, for a constant result, and I picked 11. Um, I could have picked 42. So uh, our modification so far is all CVSS scores are 11. It could be zero. It can be any number you want because um, there's no modification. It's not, it doesn't work. And it, it doesn't work for ICS. It doesn't work anywhere. Um, I, I feel a little bad saying this. I've, I'm part of the CVSS SIG. Um, I, I try to work within that, within that group, and a lot of great people there trying hard to make CVSS be useful, but I've um, been working on this for years, and I, I, I don't see a way to save the current, uh, the current design. So um, I'm going to jump into a replacement with the horrible working title backronym of TEMSL. <laughs> don't write that down, because it's going to change. Um, so instead of vectors, we, we call them features, but the vectors in the input are about the same. Um, instead of crazy math, if you looked at the CVSS equations, they raised to the 15th power. There's a rounding error of like uh, 10 to the negative 6 somewhere they're working on that part of the problem. There couldn't be a more uh, narrow view of, the, of, of what to fix in CVSS right now. So no crazy math. We're going to use a decision tree, decision tree instead. Um, instead of the partial ranges, we're going to just give you an answer, right? I'm going to take CVSS anyway and make it uh, whatever, none, low, medium, high, critical. Um, we're going to tell you mitigate now, mitigate next, or mitigate never. And I'll talk about never in just a second. Um, early draft, working title. We have looked at this problem, uh, published some stuff in the past, back in 2009. This current thing has not been tested. I sort of hurried up and made something out of our, working, uh, our work in progress uh, for the point of this talk. But I'm happy to uh, have a chance to share here. So uh, very briefly, context really, really, really matters. The vulnerability turns out to not be super important. The impact, the consequence. Um, I heard it called consequence, I think, and effect. Those are super important. Um, threats very important. Am I, are people coming at me or not? Um, how, how exposed am I? You guys covered this. Very important. Um, effect on the mission. 
uh, effect on safety. Um, and loss, we, we have in there, uh, not mission and safety, but more sort of financial loss. Uh, your business, you got a business because uh, of financial losses is an idea. Very simple categories, sort of high, you know, it's not high, medium, low, but you know, no effect, some, and significant. Um, decision tree, which I've got a slide on here in a minute, and we're gonna give you a ranked answer of when, when to mitigate. So I'll run through these very quickly. Um, slides will be around. Um, I'm looking here for evidence of active exploitation, right? There's nothing out there. There's a bunch of proof of concept on exploit DB. There is credible reports of someone attacking it. Guess which one you have to stay late Friday to patch, right? The one with evidence of active attack. How exposed am I? This goes beyond remote network. Re remote network is part of it, but do I intentionally have the thing on the internet? Is it in a, is it in a very locked down ICS environment? That matters, right? Uh, impact on mission, right? Is it little or none? Can I survive with some reduced capability? Uh, you know, is the power out? Is the process down? Is the plant turned off? Um, safety, I, I stole some stuff. Uh, there's some stuff, I think, from FEMA about irreversible injury, which is like, I guess you heal afterwards, and then there's irreversible injury, um, right? Safety is important. Um, loss beyond mission and safety is sort of cost, and at the high end, you know, I could go out of business, or I may have to be reorganized or, or sold off. Um, this is a little bit hard to see, but uh, instead of the scoring system and the weights and all that, which, uh, which a colleague of mine has a, uh, some problems with, um, we're going to use a decision tree. And it's hard to see here, but basically the, the, the theory behind the decision, decision tree creation is you take the choice that's going to give you the most information or reduce uh, entropy the most. So if safety is your most important factor, that's the first root node in your tree, and, and you go down. And I made this by hand, artisanally crafted, just for this talk. Um, there is math to do this. Um, you have to have some training data, but it's possible to have a computer tell you and help you with the tree so you don't have to do it by hand when it gets, uh, when it gets very big. So um, some scores, right? Um, this is uh, the eco-structure, um, which I think was the uh, URL redirect, right? That's all it was in the first place. You can ignore this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay some statements here that are kind of very strong, and I'm assuming a lot about your environment, so bear with me just for the purpose of the talk, but you can leave this alone, is what we're saying. By the way, never really should probably say, not now. It can be reevaluated later. If you're gonna upgrade the software anyway, great, grab the fix. But never is a little bit of a strong term, but basically, you don't have to pay attention to this one, right? Uh, Rockwell Automation RS Links, there were several vulnerabilities here. Um, um, these are all sort of next patch cycle. So. Um, I don't actually know, I'm not a process control or ICS person in my day job. Uh, my understanding is, you know, patching is a little dangerous. You don't want to change working things. Um, if you do have a change cycle, next cycle, right? Uh, let's see. Oh, we, did we have a... Uh, yep, okay. So uh, Medtronic, this is the one Billy went into a little bit. Uh, let's see. Billy had 7.3, 6.3, 7.1. I'm saying you can ignore a couple of them, and the insecure update's probably important, so get so, that next time. Yeah, so the, one that, the yep. one that those scores are just for the insecure update. The ones on the bottom, the CVSS and Clinton Billies, is just for the, the one you labeled next. Okay, yep, so the highest one, right. Uh, Delta V, bunch of nevers and a next. Uh, yeah, remote, you know, remote network service overflow, if you have some exposure and it's impacting your mission, uh, that's, a, that's a good one. Let me go back just one second. So insecure update, uh, exposure to that is high, right? We had um, uh, the, the accounting software that got popped that ended up getting Maersk and all of that stuff. Um, if, if someone can get a hold of the remote update feature, you're in trouble, right? So high exposure. Um, oh, did I go too far? Sorry, let me check quickly. All right, so Delta V, yeah, net, remote, remote network, got a problem there. I scored one more because, um, at least in the, the very general case, you know, IT and some, to some extent, we consider threat very highly. So I wanted to find one that had been, there was some evidence of active exploitation, and I picked this one um, related to a black energy uh, campaign. So with threat high, I have a three there, this is basically saying you gotta do something now because there's packets flying around that could attack this, and you don't wanna wait, basically. So I think that is it, some references, and uh, I'm good, thank you. Okay, great. So. Uh, three different approaches, and uh, I, you got, yeah. no, that's okay. okay. You guys know more about this than I do, so I, I'm kind of going to ask a very open-ended question. Uh, what did you think? I mean, it seemed like, Clint, yours was very traditional, right? It's, it's like 
change the model, change what you're scoring, but let's keep that score. Billy, yours was more of a, a grid, and, and yours was throwing it out completely hard. So where do you guys, I mean, what did you think of each other's, where, where do you stand on that? I agree with Art. Let's just don't do it. Let's just, let's, let's just take the entire CVS and replace it, and, and we're done. I think we can go now, right? No, sure. <laughs> yeah. no I, I, I agree with that, but, but yeah, it, go ahead. Yeah. I think um, initially when we looked at this problem, we kind of felt the same way, like, hey, just take CVSS and throw it out. However, um, we definitely want to be pragmatic about this, right? So I know that there's other folks that are working on scoring systems. Some of them are really complicated, and that's a barrier, right? Because one of the reasons that CVSS got so much adoption is because it is easy to use, right? And so it doesn't take an engineer. It doesn't take someone with a PhD to do it. it. Like anyone can literally go to a CVSS calculator, start pressing some buttons, and get a generalized score as to what it should be. And so I think ideally, we don't even want a score. But I think pragmatically, we're going to need a score, right? And so I think there is some merit to a modifying a system that can result in a score. Uh, just because you want people to use it. You want to make it easy for people to use. Okay. So uh, I would just like to add that. Yeah. Well, and Art, you live in this world where, I mean, you know all the players that, that make these scores and how they get created and that sort of thing. Are, are they willing to have a much simplified system, whether it has a, an actual number to it or not? Yeah, I, I absolutely take the pragmatic point, and I'm intentionally being unpragmatic at the moment. Um, uh, it's sort of the idea that if you're going to move something, you have to set the stake, you know, astronomically far away and people will maybe shift shift a little bit. We're taking that approach intentionally. Yes, I've had a couple of, I had one conversation with the, um, the payment card industry uses CVSS, for instance, in one of their, uh, for if you're scanning for, you know, MasterCard compliance. And I had a conversation with them about changing it and they said, look, we can't practically change it. It's better than, than zero, so we're going we're gonna to do something. So absolutely agree that they're pragmatic issues. Uh, my company and organization and position are such that I'm allowed to go out and say crazy things and and try to drag things over yeah. there, so. But it is a pra practical problem. Yeah, yeah. One, one other thing that I kind of want to bring up as well, and you'll see this if you go to the uh, riskscoringsystem.com website, is that uh, one of the challenges that we're facing with the calculator is that if you want to consider operational impacts, which I think everyone here is saying that's pretty important, um, it's actually different for every industry. Yeah. And so if you go to riskscoringsystem.com, there's actually three categories there. There's like medical devices, aviation, and weapon systems, because those are industries and verticals in which we had an opportunity to talk to operators, whether it's a doctor or a mission person uh, or a pilot, and say, hey, what's, what's really important to you? And they get to define the categories of importance, of operational importance uh, to us. And then that's kind of what the heavy, most heavily weighted items are. And so uh, the unfortunate piece about this is you can't just take one calculator for medical, for example, and say, it's going to work for ICS. Uh, you would actually have to get ICS operators and engineers to help you understand what the operational impacts that are important to them are, and that has to be part of your scoring system. I think that one of the issues is that um, a lot of, you know, for the most part, the CVSS is used by the researchers, and they're, and they're scoring this, and we as the end users in the industry take that score and we say, oh, that's the score, and, and, and we're not really, most people anyway, um, even though they should be, they're not taking that score and then modifying for themselves locally. They're just saying, this is the score, that's what it is. Whereas I think even the, the CVSS version as it stands now um, was originally meant for us to take that and take those temporal and then and, and modify that base score for our own purpose. But most people aren't doing that. We're just saying, oh, that's the score. And, and also it goes back to the, you know, being pragmatic is that if it's not easy to use and, to, and, if, and if it's not easily understood, people aren't going to use it. They're yeah. just going to leave it up to the researchers and say, that's the score. I, I, I actually disagree. And I think that's why CVSS is like the pathological liar. Because I, have, I had no idea what the <laughs> ecostructure of CVSS score was, nor do I care as a researcher. I, have, I don't care about URL redirection vulnerabilities, regardless of what the score is. However, when you have CVSS being included in documents published by DHS, yeah. when you have CVSS mentioned in the pre-market and post-market guidance for the FDA. When you see essentially every manufacturer when they publish a security bulletin reference a CVSS, like that goes to a lot more than just researchers. And I think a researcher can look at the score and be like, come on, right? But other folks may not be able to do that, right? right. And if you're presenting that score to them, they're gonna use it, right? So I, I think that's the real danger of CVSS. If it was only being used by researchers, 
Uh, we don't even need to fix right. it. But, but it is being used by folks outside of the research community. And I meant to say the calculator, not the score. Yeah. We're yeah, using yeah, yeah, the yeah. score. Yeah. I meant to say not using the, the calculator. The, you know, NIST hands it out, right? Right. right. That's yeah, authoritative, right? Yeah. The federal government, NIST, the time and management and the standards people are, are providing those scores. It's free number candy. Right. People are just grabbing it and running. And to CVSS's credit, yes, you guys just covered this, but you're supposed to go take the base score, add temporal and environmental, and get a modified number. Um, anecdotally, I've talked to a lot of people. Very few use CVSS that way or use it as input to a risk thing, which I think is what people actually want out of the, out of the number. They're just misusing the 7.1 as their standard risk number. Off they go. Absolute failure. Um, something you mentioned earlier I wanted to comment on very quickly, uh, um, the, the different sort of sector profiles as I, I refer to them. So the, the decision tree part of what I'm suggesting um, needs a lot of uh, research still on our end. I do not expect at this point that there is one decision tree that just works for everyone. So yeah. decision tree doesn't solve the problem of my sector and my organization are different. Um, in our past work from that 2009 stuff, um, uh, the idea was you would build your own decision tree and there was a tool that helped you build it, but on a per organization basis, because really your context is the most important thing. Agreed. Right? Same vulnerability, cross-site scripting on a, on a website that has cafeteria menus or cat pictures, right? right. Cross-site scripting on a site that has the, the PII and the secret plans and controls the process, entirely different impact. Yeah. Same technical vulnerability. CVSS doesn't get you anywhere with that. Yeah. So. One of the things that we are uh, trying to be careful of is when we start to get too abstract, right, is uh, it becomes difficult to compare. And so if someone asks, hey, how did you come to that score? and you have no way to compare the, the methodology yeah. or the approach that someone used as opposed to someone else, that's when things get really tricky, right? And yeah. so uh, even though it's not ideal and you, it's definitely lossy, you'll definitely lose detail in using a calculator style and coming up with a number. Uh, at the end of the day, if the criteria is the same and there's a difference in opinion, you can say our Talk difference in it. opinion stems from our disagreement this on this factor, yep. Yep. right? Yep. And so you can narrow down to the one factor where you disagree. Yep. And so uh, that's another reason why we were like, hey, look, Let's try to keep it as objective and as defined as possible. And it's okay for people to have disagreements. It's okay for people to have different scores for different environments, as long as they understand how those differences arise, right? So Agreed. it's not going to be perfect, uh, but you know, perfect is, is not always a good thing, right? Because uh, it can lead you down the wrong path. A lot of times it uh, wastes a lot of resources. So yeah. we wanted something that was as pragmatic and objective as possible. I wanted to touch on one other thing, Billy, that you, you said that was kind of interesting. Um, if you look at the uh, advisories that have come out from ICS CERT over the years, so you see a lot that are 9.6, 9.8, 10, you know, which is, is the maximum impact, the hair on fire, solve it, you know, this second. Um, how do, do you see these revised models? E even yours, you know, there's next, it's like, well, is it a next today or, 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 or I mean, it's a now, is it now this second or, or that? How are we going to deal with this? granularity between what is, you know, ultra serious and not. I mean, you, you did it by calling something that could kill someone a 7.3, you know, so do you guys see that or how are you going to deal with that top end granularity? We, I, I had sort of started with the, I think it's a heat map, but the, you know, the, sort of the risk chart thing that, yeah. that you had in your slides. I had sort of started in that direction, um, but we, with some discussion internally, we went, went with, the, with the tree idea. Um, it, the, th the three buckets I have may or may not be the right three buckets. You might need four. And, you know, yes, it's not clearly defined what, what you know, next is a pretty big, pretty big area. Yeah. Um, but again, uh, with the assumption that, you know, uh, in the IT world at least there's a patch cycle, right? Microsoft publishes on a certain date and Oracle has a cadence and most organizations have a cadence. You're not going to, you can't, you know, 20,000 vulnerabilities a year, you can't, they can't all be emergencies. Right. You can't patch them all immediately. Right. You would go out of business instantly from all the costs of that. So. Yeah. You've got to look at the stuff that really is hitting you. Are you going to get hit with it? If you, if you were to get hit and you're not sure you are, is it going to destroy your company, destroy the mission, catastrophic failure? Put your energy there. And that's what we're trying to aim at. Right? Well, I think you hit on it. It's very important that, to understand that um, these scores are not meant to be um, a, a likelihood attribute, right? It's not meant to tell you, um, hey, this is an emergency now. I think it's, since we, are, we are hitting on that, that it's local to everybody and it, and it needs to be localized. I think at the end of the day that these scores are meant to help you prioritize in your own environment you. what you are going to hit next. And, and, and it, it's not meant to be, well, and I take that back, there's another use too. It is used to help pry money out of management too. But, uh, but, I, but I think that ultimately it is also about, it's, these are meant to help you prioritize your vulnerabilities and how you're going to tackle them. Not meant to say, 
this is gonna happen now because only you can really say that based off your environment. Yeah, we, we try to calculate or help people understand what the top level risks could, could be. So like in healthcare, for example, the five different categories for vulnerability are, does this directly impact patient therapy, AKA you could just kill someone? Does this indirectly impact therapy? Does this affect a diagnosis system? Does it indirectly affect a diagnosis system? Or does it affect the supporting system, right? And then for vulnerabilities, uh, once you've identified what that impact is, there's another subset of, does this affect everyone in the field? So anyone that has this device gets killed. Does it affect a large number of people? Does it affect a single person? Or does it affect no one, right? And so uh, that helps people kind of understand what the top level risk is. And that's why even though the vulnerability that we had could be used to kill someone, it's still not the top level vulnerability, right? There could be yeah. things that are worse, right? So. Okay, well that's great. I, I hear a lot of commonality as to where it needs to go, whose model or what. Uh, I think the hardest part is actually getting it to change, you know, yeah. fighting through the bureaucracy. But we'll make sure we put out the, the links to their various models so you can see it even before this uh, YouTube comes out. And, and thank you very much, gentlemen. Yeah. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate it.